Another beautiful night for baseball in downtown Minneapolis with the Twins turn their attention to a Cleveland club right on their tails in the American League wild card race. The Indians appeared to have little hope back on August 8th when they sat eight games out of the wild card running, but they've since made a move. And tonight, sit a game and a half behind the Twins in what figures to be a pivotal series here at Target Field. Major matchup on the mound, Irvin Santana with the Lowest ERA in the American League over his last four starts. And Danny Salazar, who has struck out 21 twins in 13 innings against the team this year. We welcome you to Twins Baseball on Fox Sports North. Well, it comes down to this. 13 games to go, and the Twins trying to make up three games over the Houston Astros. This series should be a key. Let's set it up for you. These are familiar foes. Seven of the Twins' final 13 games this year will come against the Indians, who will impact the Twins' immediate future, and we'll find out if they can indeed return to the playoffs for the first time in five years. The Twins lead the season series 7-5, but that starting staff of the Indians is certainly significant. Both teams have benefited from solid contributions from rookies. Francisco Lindor and Miguel Sano have been terrific for their clubs, and one would imagine for years to come. And the Twins will have a fresh face on their bench tonight. Max Kepler, the Southern League MVP, called up from Chattanooga. Paul Molitor said earlier this year, it's only a matter of time before Max would be with the team. He will be the rest of the year. Up next, Dick and Burke lock in on the showdown on the mound. Danny San Salazar against Urban Magic Santana.
Sports North is presented by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. And by Ram. Come in and get a great deal on the best trucks during Ram Truck Month. Tonight at Target Field, the home stand continues. 13 games left, four series left in the 2015 season. And, of course, it'll all come down to pitching, pitching, pitching. Irvin Santana's done a nice job for the Twins over his last four starts. Still struggling a little bit here at home. Danny Salazar, part of the reason why the Indians have reemerged as a contender. He and the rest of his rotation mates are pitching very well. And we welcome you to Target Field. Dick Bramer along with Burt Flylove. And we don't know what's going to happen in the next 13 games, but we do know that the team that pitches the best is probably going to get to the postseason. And with that in mind, an interesting pitching matchup here tonight with Danny Salazar and Irvin Santana. Yeah, good pitching matchup here tonight. Danny Salazar, he's been tough against the Twins in his young career, just 24 years old. Now, the scouting report on Salazar, outstanding splitter. Well, guess what? Matt Shoemaker on Sunday, his scouting report was outstanding splitter, but he didn't make it through the fourth inning. Hopefully that'll happen here to this afternoon or this evening with Danny Salazar on the mound for the Indians. For the Twins, it will be Urban Santana. He has been outstanding over his last four starts. Look at the earned run average, 32 strikeouts in 29 innings pitch. He has not pitched very well against the Indians in his career. No better time to start than right now. 13 games left, and the Twins have a little ground to make up. They'd like to play their best baseball of the season in the last two weeks of the season. Oh, and with 13 games left, they'll take all the good luck they can get as well. Santana struck him out. And a miss. That's what the Twins want to see at the end of Santana's outing of big ear, smile. Ear to ear grin. Yep. And the Twins need some well pitched ball games here. Santana will pitch twice more after tonight. He, of course, if the Twins were to make the postseason, is ineligible to participate. And so he's running out of time to help his team in his first year with the Minnesota Twins and hopes to pitch better than he has 
in their home ballpark. And tonight's cold hard facts brought to you by Clean Chris Coors Light. Since August 9th, the Cleveland Indians have uh, got uh, gotten some traction, moving up to the 500 mark. And the Twins basically have the Indians where the Angels were at the start of their series. If the Twins can win this series, they can push the Indians back below 500, setting up the four-game series in Cleveland next weekend. The Menards batting order for the Indians. Most of their offense is up on top. Kipnis, Lindor, and Brantley. Then Santana, Chisenhall, and Gomes. El Monte, Johnson, and Ramirez. And Irvin Santana making his 15th start, his second against the Indians. And I said in the uh, in our open that he has struggled against the Indians. He has set 18 career starts, three wins, 10 losses, an ERA at 4.69. So he needs to have a good one here tonight. Northland board defense for the Twins. Eddie Rosario in left, Aaron Hicks in center, Torrey Hunter in right. Blue Escobar, Dozier, Mauer, the infielder, Suzuki behind the plate. Twins enjoyed their last off day of the season yesterday. And now 13 games to go. And the Twins hoping to do something similar to what the Indians did two years ago when Cleveland won its last 10 ball games. First pitch grounded to Plouffe. And Santana will take all of those he can get. Good start right there for Santana. Check out the umpire and crew. You'll know when it's strike three. Call Tom Hallian's got the plate. Dan Bellino, Bruce Dreckman, and Alfonso Marquez on the bases. Now Tom Hallian's been an umpire for 23 years now, so he is also the crew chief here. One down, and Francisco Lindor, who is making a late run for some American League Rookie of the Year votes. There are two tremendous young shortstops that emerged over the course of this season. Carlos Correa, of course, with the Astros. And Lindor here with Cleveland. And folks who've watched the Indians on a daily basis uh, aren't so sure that they don't have the key to their resurgence right here in their rookie shortstop. Yeah, Lindor, only 21 years old. He started the season in the minor leagues, got called up on June 14th, and has been hitting ever since. A switch hitter, hitting over 300 from both sides of the plate. Three and one, there's Terry Francona. Francona in his third season as manager of the Indians, 15th overall season at the big league level. And a liner to center. He just keeps getting line drive after line drive. And a 3 1 pitch, line drive, base hit. Here's what the young man's done over the last three and a half weeks or so. Played very well at short and hit 363. Yeah, most important thing you see is scored 15 runs. He's driven in 17 runs in the last 24 ball games. So the Indians who've kind of redone their roster, particularly the left side of the infield over the course of the year, have Lindor. At short, and uh, Giovanni Urshela, who's not on the lineup tonight, they figure he's their third baseman of the future. Here's Michael Brantley, their best player. Outside, ball one. Yeah, Brantley having a solid year. Third in the American League right now, right now at hitting at 315. Miguel Cabrera hitting 337, leading the American League. Brantley having a good year despite the fact he's had some back issues going back to spring training. Bradley had a career year last year when he hit 327 in 156 games. Drove in 97 runs last year. He has 84 coming into today's play. And good numbers against the Twins. And Santana, who fell behind Lindor 3 0, now falls behind Brantley 2 0. I mentioned before three wins, 10 losses against the Indians in his career and 18 starts. And his shortest start of the year came back against the Indians in Cleveland back on August 8th when the Indians scored eight earned runs off of them in two and a third innings. And a strike two and one. That was that tough loss to the Indians 17 to four. Ah, that was tough. <laughs> Those are tough. Really? Yeah. When you give up 17 runs. That's just a bad day at the office. <laughs> Two and one. 
Lindor with eight stolen bases in 10 attempts. Indians have stolen 78 bases. They've been caught 26 times. They've got some guys with some very good stolen base percentages. Almonte six for six. Brantley 14 for 15. Lindor eight for 10. Santana 11 for 12. Here's a liner to left. And right at Rosario for out number two. That's what surprised me. Carlos Santana 11 stolen bases in 12 attempts. Bradley hit it sharply, but right at Rosario in left field. The last 40 games, the Indians have caught fire, and of course the Royals have basically run away with the division, but now the Indians are right on the heels of the Twins, who've been second place in the division on most of the second half. And it's been a teeter-totter type season for the Indians. They'll get to 500, then they'll lose, and then they'll lose a couple, get back to 500 again, and then lose. So they're at 500 now, and the way the season has gone, they should lose here tonight. <laughs> well, like the Twins, the roster's gone through a mid-season adjustment. The All-Star break, Nick Swisher, Michael Bourne still on the team. Brandon Moss, way up and away, ball one. And like the Twins have folded in rookies like Rosario and Sano, occasionally Buxton, Trevor May, still a rookie. Indians have kind of done the same thing and it doesn't to me doesn't take much of an imagination to uh, imagine these two teams very quickly rising to the top of this American League Central Division because of the talent they brought up to the big leagues in 2015. Now they're trying to do the same thing and the twins too. what the Kansas City Royals did four five six years ago when they started bringing the Gordons and the Hosmers and the Moustakas up and the Perez's. One and one to Carlos Santana. Santana, one of the veterans for the Indians in his sixth season with the Cleveland Indians. Over his career, not much average hitter, hitting at 236, but he can hit the ball out of the ballpark. 16 home runs. Missing inside with Lindor skittering towards second base, but he slammed on the brakes. Two and one. There are four switch hitters in the lineup for Terry Francona and Santana, one of the four. Hitting only 219 as a left handed hitter, but 14 of his 16 home runs from this side of the plate. Another throw trying to keep Lindor honest. Twins with 13 games left. The Indians have 13 and a half. They've got 13 games, and if necessary, they've got a game to play. The Monday after the regular season was scheduled to be finished against the Detroit Tigers. If it matters to Cleveland, it won't matter to Detroit. But if the Indians are hanging right there around the wild card spot, half game up or down, then they've got to play a game on Monday. Now the three ball count. Santana with a total of 14 pitches thrown and just six strikes. And speaking of Detroit, Santana's last start was here against Detroit last Wednesday. Got a no decision. Twins ended up losing that ball game at 12 innings, seven to four. But he pitched good for seven innings. Drilled foul. Three and two, and now Lindor will take off. Romero looks in the dugout, see whether the Twins want him to hold the runner or the left-handed batter up there, maybe play behind the runner, and that's what Maurer will do. Santana six hits in 21 at bats against Irvin Santana. Santana kind of stepping off, make, making sure Joe Maurer is behind Lindor. In the vicinity. Runner goes and the pitch foul back. Twins leading the season series, seven wins to five. Joe Bobber right there, the bench coach with Paul Molitor. Another 3 2. Call third strike. There's the call third strike we were waiting for from Tom Halley. Comes in a good spot, too. Santana is out on strikes. And the inning ends.
games above 500, then a couple games below. Been a disappointing homestand. The Twins have lost both series, losing a two out of three to the Tigers and three out of four to the Angels. But a new series starting tonight. And here's the Menards batting order for the opener: Aaron Hicks, Brian Dozier, Joe Mauer, Miguel Sano, Trevor Plouffe, Eddie Rosario, Tori Hunter, Kurt Suzuki, and Eduardo Escobar. And it'll be 25 year old Danny Salazar making his third start against the Twins this season. 2 0 with a 2.0 ADRA. Both starts coming in early April and then May, actually, his first start of the year. Started the season in a minor league, got called up on the 18th of April, and he pitched here against the Twins, beat Phil Hughes 4 2 in that ballgame. Hicks to lead things off. First pitch grounded to short. As Kipnis was gone on one pitch, so too the Twins leadoff hitter one away. Yeah, Salazar, a strikeout pitcher, so look for the Twins to look for that fastball early and be swinging. Northland for defense for the Indians, and it has improved greatly since the start of the year. Brantley in left, El Monte in center, Chisholm Hall converted third baseman, doing a good job in right field. Ramirez and Lindor left side of the infield, Kipnis Santana on the right side, and Jan Gomes behind the plate. Here's Brian Dozier squaring to bunt, taking a strike. Dozier, the one guy who's had some pretty good looks against Danny Santana. Yeah, eight hits at 15 at bats with a couple home runs. Salazar delivers and over the inside corner, and it's 0 2. Salazar's last start against the Twins back in on May 10th. He gave up only one hit in seven innings, and it was a leadoff home run. To Brian Dozier, that was it. Fastball off the plate, one and two. Indians ended up winning that ball game over Trevor May, eight to two, back on May 10th. 11 strikeouts. He struck out 21 batters in the two starts that he has pitched against the Twins in 13 innings. The guy who, despite how hard he throws and a nasty splitter, he's had one thing that some guys never grasp that is control. He throws strikes, always has as a professional. Swing and a miss, and at 95 miles per hour, Dozier strikes out, out number two. As 183rd strikeout in 169 innings pitched. So, yes, a strikeout pitcher, good fastball out over the plate. And Wow. Great location. Two down, and that'll bring up Maurer. Saw the opponent batting average for Salazar, just 224. Tough against righties, tough against lefties. Twins lineup will have its work cut out for him tonight. And a first pitch strike. Angels have a very quick 3 0 lead over the Astros. And if you were last night while they were playing each other, if you found yourself cheering for the Astros, ball grounded to the right side tonight, change hats. Cheer for the Angels because the Astros are ahead of the Twins. A quick 1 2 3 first for Danny Salazar.
is Joe Maurer once again out there at first base, and it's a family affair as his brother Jake finished up his duties for Class A. Cedar Rapids, a tough playoff loss last night. He's on the bench tonight. I asked Joe about that. He said he's certainly excited to see his older brother back with the team and with him here during this series. He also, when I asked if he'd give him any advice, he said, yeah, older brothers always seem to give younger brothers advice, even when we don't want it. So it could be kind of a fun bar back and forth between Jake and Joe during this series. But uh, bottom line is, Joe had a big smile on his face when we talked about it. He's certainly excited to see Jake, and Jake's done a great job down there in Cedar Rapids, guys. Got him to the champ final game of the championship round of the Midwest League, losing yesterday. Hey, congratulations to Jake and uh, the Lookouts on their great season. 1 0 to Lonnie Chisenhall, and now 2 0 to Santana, really struggling uh, with his control. That first pitch was down and in, and Suzuki didn't get a glove on it and hit the uh, right foot of Tom Hellion behind the plate. Swing on a miss and a high fastball. Chisenhall now playing in right field, and it's kind of like a breath of fresh air to this young man. How many times have we seen that? Mm -hmm. Michael Kadire here. Struggled in the infield. Twins moved him around, put him in the outfield, and he had a all-star caliber player. What do you think if you're a Royals fan with uh, Alex Gordon? Mm -hmm. And Hallian again rings up Chisenhall. And Santana's got an interesting game plan here. Fall behind everybody and then come back and strike him out. <laughs> well, Chisenhall definitely looking for something else right here because this fastball is right down the heart of the plate. Yeah, I like that. I love it. I can make that sound too. This winter, when I'm out walking on the ice and I slip and fall, I make that exact make that same sound. sound. One two, down. Here's Jan Go. Two strikeouts for Santana. First five batters he's faced. Gomes struggling with some injuries and at the plate, hitting just 222. Swing and a miss. One and one. Yeah, earlier this year, he's on a disabled list, a right knee strain activated toward the end of May. It's been about a month on a disabled list. Pop foul back into the seats. And that's tough for a catcher. Anytime your knees start to bother you, and then especially the right knee, of course, is a right handed hitter. Well, that's where you kind of have your push off. Last year, he had 21 home runs. Had a great season for the Indians. Check swing two and two. Indians have won 16 of 24, 19 of 29, 25 of 40. It's a good check swing by Jan Gomes. And an off speed pitch up high, and Gomes chased. Third straight strikeout for Irvin Santana. Well, going up the ladder a little bit, even though Suzuki looking for that high breaking ball, wants it down and away, had some spin on it, and Gomes. Swinging underneath. Here's Abraham Almonte getting a chance to play in center field. And up and away ball one. Almonte, 26 years old, coming over in late July from the San Diego Padres. Uh, the outside corner, one and one. Now Monte a switch hitter is a left-handed hitter hitting 280. All four of his home runs from this side of the plate. He's had a tough time getting him out if they ever did in Cleveland a few weeks ago. Two and one. Pulled foul. Two and two. Santana strike percentage improving here in the second inning. Two and two to Almonte. To the backstop full count. Yeah, he has been effectively wild so far in the first inning plus. 
Making El Monte move his feet right there. 32 pitches, 17 strikes. And that one gets by Suzuki. Ball four. A two out walk will bring Chris Johnson to the plate. Mitchell El Monte coming over from the Padres. Chris Johnson getting traded over in the middle of August from the Atlanta Braves. Well, the Indians traded Nick Swisher and assumed the contract of Chris Johnson. And we'll see uh, whether El Monte takes off here with two outs. A first pitch strike. Johnson a couple of years ago where the Braves came in second in the National League and hitting at 321. Swing and a miss 0 and 2. Johnson's always been a high strikeout guy. Santana will try to get him here. Off the breaking ball, and it's one and two. Suzuki sitting away, and another breaking ball. Johnson stays off of. Yeah, a couple of years ago when he was second in the American League or National League and hitting it was Michael Kadire that won the batting championship that year. Mm -hmm. For the Colorado Rockies. Two and two. Full count. And El Monte will take off from first. Jose Ramirez on deck. Santana had a chance with a couple of strikeouts to start the inning to have a fairly quick inning, but now you look up and this is going to be pitch number 39. Five outs on the board. Last three outs by a strikeout. And fouled away. Johnson has played for the Astros at Diamondbacks of Braves. Now his first try at the American League. And Chris Johnson, son of former Major League player Ron Johnson. Currently managing in the minor leagues for the Orioles, his dad. Swing and a miss. And Santana strikes out the side. Issues a walk. Four batters come to the plate. Nobody puts the ball in play. We'll see if Miguel Sano can knock one out of play. The bottom of the second.
And it'll be Sano leading off the second for the Twins. Trevor Plouffe and Eddie Rosario will follow. And the first pitch down and away, ball one. Salazar with a quick one, two, three first inning. A couple of ground balls to second and a strikeout. And up high, two and oh. Salazar has allowed 23 home runs. Eight of them to right handed hitters, 15 to left handed hitters. Tapper left side on a 2 0 pitch, right to Ramirez. Low throw, Santana with a stretch, one away. What's interesting about the rookie race, none of those four players started the year with the big league club. Rosario came up a month or so into the season. Lindor and Correa, mid season call ups, and O appeared in early July. Twins have two outstanding contributing rookies this year. And that's not counting Byron Buxton, who's supposed to be the best of the lot. Rosario will hit next. Plouffe at the plate. Outside, ball one. Trevor just one hit in the 11 at bats against Salazar, but that was a home run. One and one. Trevor second on the club tied with Torrey Hunter in hitting home runs. Brian Dozier leading with 27. On the outside corner it's one and two. Bluff and Hunter with 21. And pitch up fouled it back. They got a piece of Tom Hallian. You know, you want to see a youngster get better. Salazar, six and a half years in the minor leagues of the Indians. Last year came up, up and down, made 20 starts, six wins, eight losses, an ERA at 4.25. And he's kind of putting it all together now over his last nine starts since July 31st. He's five and two with an ERA right at three. Pop straight up in the air. And Gomes. On the grass makes the catch two down. And that'll bring up one of the outstanding rookies in the American League this year, Eddie Rosario. You know, I don't think we have seen his average dip under 270, maybe 268. That's it, but always finds a way to get right to where he's at, and right about 275. Shown some power, of course, of 14 triples, the most in Major League Baseball. And they always say sometimes as a youngster you come up here the game is fast. You know they say how quick it is, but I don't think it's fast for this guy. Line to right, but right at Chisholm. Best hit ball of the night so far for the Twins, but it's another one, two, three inning for Salazar.
for the uh, Twins against the uh, Cleveland Indians in our carsoup.com trivia question. Besides Eddie Rosario, only one other rookie since 1900 has had a season with 11 home runs, 14 triples, 11 stolen bases, 15 outfield assists. Who was it? We get a hint. Was he a former twin? He was not a former twin. Was he a former San Francisco Giant. He was not Willie Mays. That's all the help we're going to give you. <laughs> like we're much help at all. And the pitch is up. And Santana again falling behind batters. This guy, Jose Ramirez, not much of a hitter, but he's four for five against Santana. Getting the green light on 2 0. He swings and fouls it back. He's faced nine batters now, only able to get ahead of two of the nine. There it is right there. Two and one. Chopper. Nice high hop for Escobar. He throws him out. Look like that ball hit something in the grass and sprung higher than it would have normally. Wild hockey returns October 10th. But we're getting you ready for all the action Saturday with the wild season preview presented by Century Link. Our panel of hockey experts takes an in depth look at the upcoming season. Wild season preview Saturday at 9 30 p.m. only on Fox Sports North. And I'm guessing uh, our Kevin Gorg is neck deep in that show. One down. Here's Kipnis. Two and oh again. It's not just missing a ball one. He's falling behind two and oh three and oh. Yeah, the first pitch didn't miss by much, but Tom Hallian saying is outside. Now Kipnis did swing at the first pitch in the first inning to lead off the ball game. He had a ground ball to Trevor Plouffe. So a little more patience for Kipnis. Two time all star for the Indians made the all star team this year and also a couple of years ago in 2013. Kipnis going through a rough patch right now, batting average still over 300. Now, Kurt Suzuki yeah. thought that was strike three. See, that's why I think he thought that first pitch might have been a strike because it was very close, but it was called a ball. He was ready to throw it to Trevor Plouffe, but Plouffe was on his way to the right side of the infield. That would have been embarrassing. Throwing it into left field. Well, Rosario's got a good arm. <laughs> and now three and two. And maybe Tom Hallian's reputation there of a, a very vociferous strike three call is the only thing that kept Suzuki from firing the ball to the left side of the infield. Five three ball counts on the ground hit right to Escobar. It's retired two down. Establish postseason priority this fall by buying 2016 season tickets. Don't miss an inning of postseason play and experience. Exclusive sweet spot benefits such as 10% off food and beverage at Target Field. For more info or to place a deposit, call 612 375 7454. Or if you'd like, visit twinsbaseball.com slash season tickets today. Francisco Lindor with two gone in the third and a first pitch strike. You know, we talk so much about the importance of wins for the Twins, also for the Indians. They're a game and a half. Behind the twins in the standing. As we said, it's kind of where the Angels were when that series started. But then the Angels came in here and won three of the four games, and the Indians are in a similar spot, although in a three game series. Off the outside corner, two and one. Angels leading Houston 3 1, bottom of the second inning. Hit hard to center and Hicks retreats. Still going back and he's there to make the catch. Good first step by Hicks. He holds in a line drive. And Santana has his first one, two, three in it.
presented by Century Link, your link to what's next. By NorthlandFord.com and your local Northland Ford dealer. And by Grand Casino. The best stories start here. Santana a little wobbly with his control here tonight with three scoreless innings. And now Torrey Hunter will lead things off in the bottom of the third. Yeah, 54 pitches, but you mentioned, Dick, three shutout innings. So hopefully the uh, next four or five innings will be quicker. On the outside corner, a strike. Yes. Hunter, Suzuki, and Escobar. And Salazar, seven batters now, five first pitch strikes. One and one. Torrey's had a good season series against the Indians. Going to get the Twins' first hit here tonight. Foul into the camera at the end of the Cleveland dugout. Yeah, Tor. Yep. Like Avila's getting that ball and sure throwing it up to the stands. One and two to Hunter. High pop up, deep short. Lindor calls for it. One down. And now for you to tweet your strongest fan photo. We've gotten so many good pictures over the course of uh, this baseball season. Use hashtag North Data Strong Fan and you might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T Mobile. One down. That'll bring up Kurt Suzuki. Deep short, Lindor out. Brantley coming in. Lindor wants this one now, giving way to the left fielder. Two down. Yeah, we've seen three of the first eight hitters jump on that first pitch and all make how outs. Hicks did, Rosario did, and now Suzuki jumps on that first pitch. Eduardo Escobar will bat. I mean, he's had eight outs. He's thrown a total of 22 pitches. Salazar was a big reason why the Indians caught fire in September two years ago. His record was just two and three, but he made 10 starts and pitched with an ERA of 3.12. And then, as luck would have it, the Indians had to win out to get into the postseason, to get into the wild card spot, a one game uh, playoff, if you will. And then Salazar's. Uh, turn was up. He had to make the postseason start against the Tampa Bay Rays. It didn't go particularly well. He was taken out after four innings. They gave up three runs. They ended up losing that ball game. And now on the outside corner, two and one. Well, Salazar went to spring training hoping to be one of the starters coming out of spring training, and Zach McAllister actually was put into the rotation. Zalar, Zal, Salazar went down to the minor leagues. And then McAllister had a couple of bad outings, and they put Salazar in the uh, rotation. McAllister went to the bullpen, and lately he's been struggling a bit. Two and two to Escobar. Pulled down the line. It's a foul ball. Not by much. Wow. And Bellino made the call staring right at it from up here. Looked like it went right over the bag. Well, Butch Davis right there at first base, the coach didn't say anything. Watching it right here. Nope, foul ball. Yep. Well, had some hook on it. Good call by Dan Bellino. And a non reviewable call. Two and two to Escobar. A little dribbler up the line, and that will go foul. And Salazar just kicks it out of the warning track. He 
you see the spin of the ball right there and Salazar makes sure that it's in foul territory. And he kicks it toward the Twins dugout. Salazar at least or Santa Escobar at least is running up Salazar's pitch count or at least trying to here. Some contact. Strikeout pitcher and the twins so far have had just one strikeout. That was Dozier back in the first. And now three and two hicks on deck. Missing inside, the Twins get their first base runner. Hey, you mentioned before Salazar, very good control throughout his young career. Wow. Maybe he's hoarse. Can't make the call. I would think three. Call. I would think as a you know as a pitcher, you have a guy like Tom Hallion that loves to ring up guys that. He would have loved to have ringed him up right there. Or rang him up. Here's Hicks grounded out on the first pitch he saw in the first inning. Escobar not much of a threat to steal, but he draws a throw nonetheless. Salazar pretty quick home too. Three stolen bases off of him, but four have been caught. Hicks takes a belt high strike. Oh, and one. Now one and one. Two and one. Well, like Santana in the second inning, he kind of struggled to finish off the inning, and now Salazar's pitch count is climbing up after the second out of the third. The first. Well, that's why it's so important for a starting pitcher to have innings like he did in the first and second inning. Eight pitches in the first, nine in the second. Because somewhere you're going to have to need 20 pitches in an inning. You can see the eight and the nine, now 16. Salazar making his 17th road trip, a quick trip to the mound by Gomes. Seven of his 13 wins have been on the road, but six of his eight losses have also been on the road. Two and one to Hicks. Three and one. Dozier on deck. Now you said what? Twenty two pitches after Suzuki's fly ball to left. He had eight outs on the board. Now Twelve pitches later he's still looking for his ninth out. Dozier's the one guy who's had some success against Salazar. Maybe coming to the plate here yet in the third inning. Three and one. Hicks drives it to left center field. Headed to the gap. Belmonte and Brantley. And Brantley with a diving catch. No, he didn't catch it. He did not catch it. And Escobar will score. Hicks to third with a triple. And the Twins take a one nothing lead. Great effort by Brantley. And I thought for a while that he'd caught it. I think it looked like our from our angle he had it in the glove but I think when he made contact with the turf it just trickled away. 
But a 3-1 fastball, good hitting by Hicks. Not trying to pull it, just went with it. Outer half of the plate. And Brantley goes a long way for this ball. And he knocked it down. That's basically what he did right here. Watch this. And hit him right yep. in the palm of the glove and rolled through, I think, before he had a chance to close the glove. Well, Hicks with a triple, driving in his 31st run, and the Twins take an early 1 0 lead. So the walk to the number nine hitter. It's the only score of the ball game so far. No ball one to Dozier. All right, good hitting by Hicks. A pitch away from him, and he drove it to the gap in right center field. Left center. Who bunted right past Mauer near the Twins dugout? Yikes. Tom Bernanski always standing right there. He got out of the way. There's Bruno. Tom Bernanski, the hitting coach, on one side of that step area, and Paul Molitor on the other. Foul back. An off speed pitch. Yeah, great numbers against Salazar. Salazar struck about with a good fastball, 95 mile an hour fastball in his first at bat, outer half of the plate. To left center field, down for a hit. Hicks will score. Dozier rounding first, digging for second. And the throw not in time. And the Twins have a pair of extra base hits after the two out walk. Well, another fastball. Looked like he tried to strike him out again away, but it stayed up a little bit. And we've seen all season long that Brian Dozier likes that high fastball. And good hustle by Dozier with two outs. You want to get in the scoring position. That fastball. Up about letter high. You know, he did not play on Sunday against the Angels. Had yesterday off. They wanted to give him a little breather. And a big hit right there by Dozier driving in. Hicks, 2 0 lead. And now Bauer. Ball down and away, ball one. Eight up, eight down for Salazar. Then the walk, the triple, the double. As a pitcher, you look back and you say, that walk to the number nine hitter. It's not like Escobar is an easy guy to walk. Right. Over the inside corner, one and one. Escobar just his 22nd on the year. He's under 400 at bats. Out in front, off speed pitch, and it's one and two. Yeah, that's that splitter right there. That's basically Salazar's ammunition toward home plate. It's a good fastball, then the splitter. 8 9 now 25 here in the third. He's thrown 20 pitches since the eighth out. And he's given up two runs. And Bauer fights another splitter off. Doesn't spin the ball that much. No, he doesn't have a breaking ball to speak of, but that splitter. And that fastball combo worked awfully well for him. Yeah, he has a slider, he has a big slow curveball, but he rarely throws those two pitches basically the fastball and then the splitter. So this is over the course of the year, and you know, slider and curveball combined for less than 10% of his pitches. Right. One and two. 
two and two. When you have a guy who typically throws strikes and does not give up many hits, that's Salazar in a nutshell. You better bunch things together. That's what the Twins have done here after the second out. Walk and a couple of extra base hits. Two and two. And now a foul into the seats. Joe hitting a two run home run here on Sunday in the ninth inning, his ninth home run of the year. In the eight to one win over the Angels. Base hit left field. Dozier around third, he'll score now. Mauer digs for second base. Three extra base hits after the two out one. And all three hits hit very sharply. I credited Brian Dozier for his hustle double to get into scoring position, and the same can be said for Joe Maurer. 30th double of the year, driving in his 65th run. So again that, that two out walk to Escobar has set up an RBI triple an RBI double and now another RBI double. We know why he doesn't throw the slider very often. It looks like that's what it was and it just kind of sat up around belt high and spun there. Dozier scoring the third run of the inning. Now we're getting in ahead of the tag. Mickey Callaway the pitching coach to the mound. A really good sign. The Twins through this homestand have had a scarcity of two out hits with men on base, but now three straight hits, three straight extra base hits with two outs and men on base. And that's important right there. You know, Dozier when he took off for that where that ball was in the gap, he was thinking two the whole way. And same for Joe Mauer. Yeah, Twins don't steal a lot of bases, so if you can get in the scoring position by taking the gamble that they're not going to throw you out at second, both Dozier and Maurer did that. Salazar fell behind Sano 2 and 0, and then Sano bounced to third, leading off the second inning. Off the plate, ball one. How about this? Eight up, eight down, and it looked like Salazar was ready to pitch deep into the ball game now. After the eighth out, the Indians have to fire up their bullpen. We got 11 guys out there, so. <laughs> it is September. And their manager is Terry Francona. Yeah, he maybe needed more relievers. <laughs> Ryan Webb warming up. One and one to Sano. Two and one. Yeah, Salazar's lost it right here. Salazar just making his 58th major league start. 21 wins, 19 losses. Yeah, he's really aiming that fastball outer outer half of the plate now. How many pitches did he throw through two 17 pitches? Okay. Well look at this 33 pitches according to my Minnesota elementary math. Yeah, very good. Oh, That's quick too. Three and one to Sano. A dangerous pitch for Danny Salazar. And it's a walk to fill first base. Five men in a row have reached. After the second out. And now Plouffe who fouled out to Gomes. For the middle out of the second inning. And Salazar's shortest outing came three starts ago in Detroit where he worked. Three and two thirds innings gave up six runs. And a six nothing loss. To the Tigers.
In the middle of strike. Foul back two strikes. Yeah, Trevor leading the Twins with runs batted in. And Torrey Hunter second. A good little run here the last two weeks. You can imagine Trevor with 90 or more runs batted in. A chance to drive in as many as three in this at bat. Yeah, he led the club in that department last year with 80. 0 and 2. Takes up ball one. Blocked by Gomes. Mauer stays at second. Two and two. What a nightmarish third inning for Danny Salazar. Rounding kind of like this against the Tigers at the start of this month. Three and two thirds innings and six runs. Two. Toward the hole. Great stop at short by Lindor. And he throws Plouffe out. Wow. One of the greatest plays you'll ever see a shortstop make in a key spot. An unbelievable play by Francisco Lindor. We'll see if the Twins challenge this. They've got at least three this inning thanks to three straight extra base hits after the second out. That's how good it was. Well, watch this Lindor right here. It looks like a base hit to left field. He reached out the last second, got up, and a two-hop throw over to Santana. 
just kidding Trevor Plouffe. I think we're going to see a lot of plays like this from this youngster right here. Only 21 years old. Got rid of it as quick as he could. And Santana stretching out as far as he can, but what an outstanding defensive play. Well, Michael Brantley will lead off the fourth, and Santana has had plenty of time to sit and try to figure out what has gone wrong for him in the first three innings in terms of throwing strikes, but he delivers strike one to Brantley. Santana and Chisenhall will follow. On the ground. Right to Escobar. One down. A good little off speed pitch right there. Gets a ground ball out. And it'll bring up Carlos Santana. Irvin Santana has kind of blown hot and cold in the second half of the year. Of course, he couldn't pitch at all in the first half because of the PED suspension. And just to remind everybody, if the Twins should get to postseason play, Santana will not be in uniform. That's the second part of his suspension. If there is a game 163, Santana would be eligible. Hot ground ball to Bauer, and he'll make the play two down. But the rotation is set up such that Santana will uh, pitch again for the Twins a Sunday in Detroit and then Friday here against Kansas City. And if there's a game 163, it would be the following Monday, and the Twins would have to juggle their rotation and shorten Santana's starts by a day. Or two days once, one day twice, to allow him to pitch game 163. The best uh, scenario, the most likely scenario, is that Santana has this start here tonight and then two more. And you take, and that's what Paul Mollard is doing. You take one game at a time. You hope that Bill Hughes is on tomorrow night. He's putting that rotation again. And then it's Gibson. In Alaska is going to come back, and Paul said today the Twins uh, would use him out of the bullpen. Hasn't pitched since May. Three and one to Lonnie Chisholm. Called out on strikes his first time up. And lifted foul three and two. As we've said throughout this homestand, there really isn't such a thing as a Twins starting rotation because they're going series to series and Putting people in. Dozier with a great stop going to his left and he throws him out. <laughs> Lindor for the Indians. Dozier for the Twins and a couple of outstanding plays to wrap up the last two half innings. If Lindor can do it, so can I. That's what Brian Dozier did right here.
I think Brian Dozier with a great play and an RBI double that's helped the Twins hold, build, and hold a three to nothing lead. Yeah, three ground ball outs that inning for Santana. That's a big inning. After your team put three on the board, he put that zero up as quick as he could on only 10 pitches. So a very, very important inning for a starting pitcher, and that being Urban Santana here tonight. Eddie Rosario will lead things off and uh, Danny Salazar hoping for a much better time of it. Rosario motions as if Devonta takes ball one. I want to pass along birthday wishes to Joan Buck, who is a devout Twins fan and celebrated her birthday yesterday, but we weren't on the air yesterday, so we couldn't wish her a happy birthday yesterday, and we're doing it tonight. Do you know how many? Um, I don't because I was told it's none of my business. Oh. Hmm. So. I didn't pursue it any further. Popped up foul and out of play. Jones uh, apparently watches every Twins game and uh, Joan happy birthday to you. Michael Brantley out of the ball game. Martinez now in left field. So maybe that dive that he had out in the mm -hmm. left center. Didn't see anything happen on his jog to first with Escobar throwing him out. This one popped high and foul the other way. A lot of times you dive for a ball like that you might have maybe jammed his left arm. Well you know and he's had some back issues right. too so you, you right. hope that it's nothing serious serious yeah. yeah. Two and two to Rosario he lined out to right his first time up hit the ball right on the butt but right at Chisenhall. And a chopper foul. Salazar last inning needed 39 pitches to get through that inning. Twins attacked him. And lifted to left. And Rosario retired. Let's get caught up with the Twins up 3 0. Well, the walk to Escobar opened up the floodgates. And there's Brantley right there diving for that ball. And he hit that ground pretty hard. That scored Escobar. The next batter, Brian Dozier, a hustle double. That scored him from third base. And then Joe Maurer followed with almost deja vu, exactly same spot. And Joe Maurer, a hustle double. Hunter takes a strike. Angels leading Houston 3 2, bottom of the fourth inning at Minute Maid Park in Houston. And up and away, one and one. Crack to right field, chisel all over. And that ball is right. trapped, I believe. And Hunter will get a base hit. Chisenhall's lucky that he was able to get it on the first hop. Yeah, he's lucky that that ball came up very quickly rather than maybe hitting something and going over the diving Chisenhall. But Torrey hitting the ball sharply the other way. Ball had some top spin on it. Chisenhall dove for it, kept it found a way to keep it in his glove. So Torrey picks up his first hit and the fourth for the Twins. And that'll bring up Suzuki. Suzuki with a fly ball to left his first time up. Starting with the Rosario at bat in the second inning, the Twins have hit more balls hard against Salazar here tonight than they did in his two prior starts against him. Yeah, the fastball, it doesn't look like he has a good splitter here tonight. Remember at the top of the show, I said, you know, on Sunday it was Matt Shoemaker pitching for the Angels that was known for a very good splitter. He didn't have it. But the fastball location first couple innings were outstanding but he's kind of been all over the place. Last inning and this inning. With Lance the fastball. He's hit by a pitch. Yeah, that was a, maybe a splitter at 80 miles an hour. And I would imagine that might be enough to get the Cleveland bullpen fired up again. Twins take uh, on the Kansas City Royals October 2nd through the 4th at Target Field. Fan Appreciation Weekend is Friday and Saturday presented by U.S. Bank. All fans receive a twin stocking cap, which we will need here in Minnesota before too long. 
presented by West Bend. Sunday is Kids Appreciation Days. The first 10,000 fans, 14 and under, get a TC stocking cap. Again, with the stocking cap, what the Farmer's Almanac predicting a terribly cold winter or what? Courtesy of our family brands. Call 800 33 Twins or visit twinsbaseball.com and get your tickets today. Just nice to have up here. Mickey Calloway out for the second straight inning. This one was a very slow walk to allow maybe Webb again to get up in the bullpen as he jogs back. Eduardo Escobar drew the walk that triggered the three run third inning. Came with two outs in the inning. And it is Ryan Webb getting up for the second time. Escobar takes a strike on the outside corner. And remember, within Escobar's at bat, there was that two strike pitch that was up and in, according to Tom Hallion. But on Fox Tracks, it was well within the strike zone. It could have been the end of the inning. Oh, no, no. If you're a Twins fan, it was inside. Was it? Oh, yeah. That wasn't one of those pitchers' pitches? <laughs> and then the Twins went triple, double, double. Who knows where the inning might have gone except for the extraordinary play by Francisco Lindor. One and one to Escobar. Foul back. This would have been strike three and the third out. And again, Fox Tracks had it in the upper left. Not quadrant. What is it when you got this? something divided into ninths? What is it? It was a strike. It was a strike. <laughs> All right, somebody tweet me or text me. What is it when something's divided into ninths? The upper left what popped up to center, and we'll have a commercial break here, and somebody will be smart enough to give us the answer. Well, That's no, just a second out. Be the second See, out. I can't Game figure out here. how many outs in an inning, much less what. <laughs> Two down, and that'll bring up Hicks. It was Hicks who drove the gapper into and then out of Brantley's outstretched glove. Well, he got the count in his favor to 3 1, and then Salazar came in with a fastball out over the plate. Like I said, when Hicks hit that ball, good piece of hitting. Hicks with that triple, his third triple of the year. That thing right there in the lower right hand is divided into nights. Fox tracks presented by Ram. Down and in ball one. So each one of those segments is called a what? A box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're right. I can't argue that. Yeah. It's part of the strike zone. The right. Williams strike zone. Mm -hmm. But not tonight. Not uh, Tom Hallion strike zone. One and zero, oh. and foul back one and one. You know, a lot of times I will watch Gomes, the catcher here tonight, or Suzuki, and see how they move behind the plate. And you know, if the catcher's sitting outside and the ball's in, that means you. Not uh, on the same page with your catcher as far as control. A lot of times, Gomes will sit outside. The ball is inside. See where he moves to here. Tap foul. Speed pitch. That was that splitter. With the pitch count alone, this would be number 75 for Salazar. He's not going to be around much longer. You wouldn't think. And if Hicks delivers a hit here, it might be the end of the road for Salazar here in the fourth inning. Seats. 
Salazar came in at a ball game in six career starts three and one against the Twins with an ERA at 3.18. He has pitched well in the previous six starts. A drive to right center field headed to the gap Chisholm Hall under it short of the track and he makes the catch. Little too much airtime under that and the Twins lead two on in the fourth. New fans of the game. The twins up three to nothing. And Irvin Santana with four shutout innings. Pitching with a three nothing lead, one and oh to Jan Gomes. He struck out swinging his first time up. Swing and a miss. Good off speed pitch right there. Gomes, a very good fastball hitter. Ball hit to right center field and is down for a hit. And Hunter will cut it off. But Gomes on his way to second with a leadoff double. Well, there's a fastball out over the plate. And good hitting by Gomes. Gets just the second hit for the Indians, but it's a leadoff double here in the top of the fifth. For Gomes, his 18th double of the year. Ball left up a little bit by Santana. You see Suzuki wanting it away. Well, kind of came back a little bit and almost taking it the other way off the end of the bat. Just the second hit for the Indians. Lindor got a first inning single, third base runner. Santana walked a man. Here the ball hit sharply right at Dozier. Monte quickly retired, one away. On the play, Gomes goes to third. Bring up Chris Johnson. Had someone suggested that box with the nine sections in it. They were called nonuts. Hmm. A lot of people, of a lot of before. people said quadrants, but that can't be right because I remember from my Latin that means four. Twins leading three nothing. They'll play the infield back here for the Johnson at bat. Inside ball one. Johnson went down swinging in the second. Yeah, Santana has four strikeouts. Johnson. Was his fourth to end the second inning. Swing and a miss. Nice block by Suzuki with that runner at third base. And it's one and one. 
four strikeouts and they came in terms of outs recorded in succession last out of the first and all three of them of the, in the uh, second inning. There was a walk to El Monte mixed in there. Santana would take a pop up here just as well. Yeah, a guy like Santana that's always been kind of a strikeout pitcher averaging over seven strikeouts per nine inning. This situation he'd like to get the punch out right here. Keep the shutout intact. Number nine hitter Ramirez on deck. Johnson lays off the breaking ball two and two. He laid off a couple of those in his first at bat when Santana got ahead in the count. Strikeout of Johnson and now Ramirez. Tonight, be sure to catch Fox Sports Live on Fox Sports One for complete highlights and analysis of everything that happened in Major League Baseball today, plus the latest from the NFL and the world of sports. Fox Sports Live is tonight on Fox Sports One, streaming live on Fox Sports Go. When you're a strikeout pitcher, there are certain times that, especially like that situation right there, man on third, one out, you got to get a strikeout. And Santana able to do that now. That's over with. Now you try to get this number nine hitter, Ramirez, and get out of the inning with any damage. Another nice block by Suzuki. That was a tougher one. Looked like it landed well in front of the plate. You cannot put enough on a catcher that is like Kurt Suzuki that's able to do that. Knock it down. As a pitcher, you're not afraid to throw that ball in the dirt. Mauer with a nice knockdown. Santana to the bang, not in time. And the ball thrown behind home plate. And now Suzuki can't pick it up cleanly. And Ramirez will go to second base. Mauer looked like that he had the ball hit off the heel of his glove. And Gomes will score for the first Cleveland run. Ramirez hitting the ball sharply. Mauer diving to his left. And the ball got behind him. And then in, in the hurry throw to try to get Ramirez at first base, he overshot Santana, who was over there covering the bag. Right into the runner, and Ramirez alertly scoots for second base. Oh, a chopper over the mound. Weird hop, and Escobar. That might be as good a play as the one Lindor made for a different reason. That ball really took a weird hop, and he stayed with it to get the out and the inning.
are in the middle of the Minnesota State Lottery Winner's Circle 100 scratch-up tickets. Been doing it all summer. Larry from Fairmont, this is the best sign I've seen. Let's try to get all this noise wrapped into one little bow here. 50 years old today. Happy birthday. Thank you. Tommy Lasorda's 88th birthday, and more importantly, the anniversary of Burt's no-hitter as a Ranger 38 years ago today. You got Burt and Dan Gladden to sign it, and you get 100 scratch-off tickets. Pretty good birthday. Yes, it is a great birthday for me. Now, who did the sign? Because I know, looking at you, you're not this good an artist. No, I'm never this good. <laughs> My cousin, Laura Dunkard. Well, Laura, well done. Bert, you get to circle him twice, and this sign, as good as it gets, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. He is here by circle, but uh, also my uh, grandson, Dylan's 12th birthday today. Oh, so really? Happy birthday to you, Dylan. Does he make as big a deal out of his birthday as you of do out of yours? Of course, he's a Bly Lemon. Come on. 198 more days until my birthday. Thank you for asking. I think all the all the stars that will fall from the sky between now and then. All the water that will go over dams between now and then. Life marches on. Yes, it does. I just hope I'm here. <laughs> well, I do too. <laughs> One and two to Dozier. Foul back into the seats. Dozier with a big RBI double and a run scored in the third. That it matters that much, I don't suppose, in terms of the pennant race, but Seattle leading Kansas City 11 to nothing in the fourth. Dozier swings and misses a strikeout. Yeah, good splitter right there, and Salazar picking up just his second strikeout, both of them, Brian Dozier. Sanford Health injury report Buster Posey has got some hip and back issues. And the Giants fading out of contention. But they'll be back next year and they'll win the World Series. Yes, they will every other year. Mauer, an RBI double his last time up. Talking about the Seattle Kansas City game, it's 11 0, but the biggest news out of Kansas City is Greg Holland's been replaced as the Royals' closer. Wade Davis will be their closer till further notice. Well, remember, Davis was the closer when Holland was on a disabled list and he did a great job. Collins had some elbow issues in the second half of the year. 2-0 to Mauer. The other bullpen news with uh, within the American League Central involves the Detroit Tigers. Where uh, Bruce Rondon, their designated closer, was told to go home. That's clean, not good. Clean out your locker and go home. They were disappointed in his effort. And I applaud. I don't know what the issues were, but I applaud Alex Avila or Al Avila, the general manager, for stepping up and saying, we're just not going to put up with it. Go home. Three and one. Mauer takes ball four, and that'll bring Sano to the plate with a man aboard. Yeah, third walk for Salazar in the ball game. Three to one ball game, and the Twins could use some cushion here. Like to get that run back that the Indians put on the board in the top of this inning. And with this guy, you might add a run. Sano with the bouncer to third on a 2 0 pitch, and then he drew a walk in the third. Big swing and a miss. Fastball outside for strike one. Think about Sano. He has 17 home runs, only four solo home runs. He has two three run home runs. Everything else are two run home runs. There's a guy on right now. Mm -hmm. Swing and a miss on two. That splitter right there, better location. And he does have a flair for the dramatic, particularly here in September. His pinch hit home run in Kansas City, the two run game tying home run in the Angels series on Saturday. And time call.
reach back for 96. And Sano strikes out, two down. No one has uh, been uh, frustrated by Francisco Lindor more than Trevor Plouf. Look at this back in mid August. Same type of play in the hole, a double play. And then tonight. Now what's that tell you? Trevor Plouf quit hitting it to this guy. And by two incredible plays. And a breaking ball off the plate, ball one. So three to one ball game. The Twins bunching things together to score three runs in the third. Oof, with a swing and a miss at a high fastball. One and one. To the frustration, you got a guy out on the mound with nasty stuff who doesn't give up many hits, and then you think you've got one, and his shortstop takes it away. Well, that's how the game can go. In the first two innings, outstanding 17 pitches, the tough third inning through 20 pitches last inning, and now it seems like Salazar's found his groove again. A fastball, a strikeout, ends the inning, a walk, but no damage done. On to the sixth, it's three to one, Minnesota. Find more than 50 breweries and brew pubs to visit throughout the state. Visit exploreminnesota.com and plan your Minnesota autumn beer adventure. Share and tag your Minnesota brewcation experiences with hashtag only NMN. You can savor the fall colors of the landscape through the day and sip the fall colors of Minnesota craft beer through the evening. That sounds like a really good idea. Francisco Lindor will lead off the sixth against Irvin Santana. First pitch over for a strike. In addition to making about as nice a play as the shortstop can make in the hole, Lindor has a single and a line out to Hicks fairly deep in center field. And now chipped foul, two strikes. Santana trying to go to six and four on the year. Ground. Bauer gets this one. Santana rushing to the bag. One away. Didn't quite make the play going to his left. Makes a nice play going to his right. One away. Twins fans, listen up to find out how you can buy tickets to potential postseason games here at Target Field. For the first time on Wednesday, September 30th, the general public will be able to buy tickets to a potential wild card game as well as any division series games played at Target Field. 
Beginning at 10 a.m. on the 30th, all you have to do is visit twinsbaseball.com and pick up your tickets to October. One down here in the sixth, and now Michael Brandley. Excuse me, Martinez. Michael Martinez, a September call up. Spent the season in Triple A, played 102 ball games for in Columbus, hit 290. A switch hitter. They have five switch hitters in their on their roster. All of them are in the ball game right now. One and one. And that one just kicked foul. We've not received word as to what Brantley's situation is or why he had to leave the game. And as someone who just loves watching great baseball players, I hope he's back in the lineup tomorrow. Well, Martinez, 32 years old, he's played for the Phillies and the Pirates. In the dirt, blocked by Suzuki, two and two. Martinez out of the Dominican Republic. As Irvin Santana is. So many good players coming out of the Dominican Republic. And off speed pitch, Santana gets another strikeout, two down. Good movement on that pitch right there. A fastball, almost like a two seam fastball that started out or half and then just ran out of the strike zone. And Martinez couldn't reach it. So strikeout number six in a ball game for Santana. And now Carlos Santana is over two. Called out on strikes in the first need a ground ball to Bauer in the fourth. If the knees a strike. Top of the sixth. Angels leading Houston three to two. Santana with his six strikeouts, also nine ground ball outs and only two fly ball outs so far. In the dirt, Santana's, or excuse me, Suzuki's had a busy time for a while. It looked like he might have. <laughs> he tried to get out of the way of that one. Suzuki might have been able to uh, keep Gomes at third base, but then Ramirez got his infield hit. Scored him with two outs anyway. Chop to Maurer and a foul ball. Irvin Santana does a good job at changing speeds. He'll mix in that little slider, but every fastball isn't at 92, 93. He'll throw one at 89. Two seam fastball has some sink on it. Four seam fastball straight. Saw Suzuki go through about four different signs, and finally Santana agreed. And Suzuki, I don't know if he'll have to put down another sign, which he does. A change up. Dozier with a nice backhanded pickup. He's made two good picks have, at second base. We've seen some good defensive plays here tonight.
second base. Why? <laughs> And guess who's leading off? Eddie Rosario. Funny how that works. Rosario, Hunter, and Suzuki in the sixth. The Twins leading three to one. Very important game for the Twins. After winning the series finale against the Angels on Sunday. Yeah, these are must wins for the Twins from here on out. All right, for the Twins, 13 games remaining. How many will they need to win to hopefully get a chance to get in the postseason? Obviously, it depends on, you know, it'd be one thing to take a stab at that if they were in control of their own destiny. Right. But so much of it depends. Here's a drive to left. Retreating is Martinez, and he makes a catch near the end of the track, or edge of the track, one away. So much of it depends on something the Twins can't control, what the Astros do, and they've got a big series with the Texas Rangers right. coming in. Right. Soup.com trivia question besides Eddie Rosario only one other rookie since 1900 has had all of that. I'm going to go Roberto Clemente. Now how many <laughs> decades would it take for us to come up with Ival Goodman. <laughs> I've never even heard of him. No, I'm sad to say I either have I. John Goodman but, I've heard of. Tory Hunter, the batter, checks his swing and takes ball one, one and one. Tory singling to right in his last at bat, one of four hits off of Salazar in a ball game. He's down three to one because the Twins bunched their hits together in the third inning. Chopper to third, and Ramirez has an easy play, two down. I'll bring it, Kurt Suzuki, as promised earlier in the game. We have selected the data strong fan photo of the game. We meaning collectively. I have nothing to do with it. I, I might nominate my own pictures, but we as a group will do this. And you can tweet your strongest fan photo to hashtag North Data Strong Fan for a chance to be featured in an upcoming broadcast in Maryland as our did we say a winner? Because I don't think they get anything for it, but well, they're having a good time. Brought That's to you by T Mobile. At Target Field. Maybe they get a stocking cap for it. That seems to be the theme. <laughs> they can have mine. No, I think Thursday it's Love Your Melon Day here at Target Field, which is a wonderful charitable endeavor. Stocking cap, special stocking caps. So say Love Your Melon. Here's Kurt Suzuki. Headed up the middle. And Lindor can't quite get that one. And Suzuki. With a base hit. Well, we figured out about Lindor. He can go to his right, but he can't go to his left. <laughs> right? Well, Suzuki picks up his first hit in the fifth for the Twins. And that'll bring up basketball. This is an uncomfortable three to one lead with so much at stake. And about the time the Twins scored their three runs, Michael Brantley left the game, but then the Indians got the next run. And it's just a two run game. We'll see what Escobar can get done here in the sixth. And Salazar has really settled down nicely since that third inning. Looks like he might be taken out in the third inning. Now here he is in the sixth, swing and a miss. And that fastball still at 96 miles an hour. Signed by the Indians when he was 16 years old back in July of 2006 out of the Dominican Republic. Center field. And Martinez retreats for the catch. Twins are done on the sixth, on to the seventh. It's still three to one.
scoring coming with two outs for the Twins after Escobar walked with two outs. Aaron Hicks with an RBI triple followed by a Dozier RBI double. Scoring Hicks for the first run of the ball game. And then Joe Maurer, the next hitter, an RBI double. That scored. Brian Dozier, Escobar scored the first run. And then the Indians with two outs. It was Ramirez with an infield base hit that scored Gomes. And so far, both starters, Salazar, struggled a lot in the third inning. Other than that, he has settled down nicely. And Irvin Santana, another good start. First pitch poke foul off the bat of Chisholm. This, this is a big inning for Santana right here. I think the Twins want to get him through the seventh right here. 91 pitches. He's pitched at least seven innings in each of his last four starts. Old foul, two strikes. Yeah, ten ground ball outs for Santana, two fly ball outs with his six strikeouts. So he's making the Indians hit the ball on the ground. Oh, and two to Chisenhall. Santana came into this ball game over his last 29 innings, excuse me, four starts, 29 innings, 32 strikeouts. Only five earned runs allowed over his last four starts. He's having another good one here tonight. Missed with a breaking ball. It's two and two. Popped up. He was a little erratic with his control the first couple innings, but he has not walked anybody. Excuse me, he has one walk. Goes El Monte in the second inning with two outs. And a weak chopper back to Santana, one away. Got word on the Michael Brantley. He has a uh, some injury to his right shoulder. Now remember, he's a left-handed thrower, and so it was his right arm extended as he was trying to make that diving catch of the uh, Hicks gapper back in the third inning. And he's still being evaluated, but that's the reason he left with a sore right shoulder, his glove side. Here's Jan Gomes. Gomes took a pitch away from him and drove it hard to the gap in right center for a leadoff double. And now he fouls one and Suzuki knocked backwards. It's the second time in his homestand that Suzuki's been staggered by one of these. Yeah, directly on the mask. And Tom Halley and the home plate umpire is going to make sure he's all right. With a little extra time. Dave Prumer. You see where out. the ball ended up. Wow. It just hit him flush right in the middle of the mask. Mm. Listen. Take a beating. One strike to Jan Gomes. Just three hits for the Indians. One of them an infield hit that drove in a run. And that's hit to the left field corner. Chased by Rosario. That is a foul ball. Hit off the end of the bat with some hook on it. Yeah, that breaking ball stayed up a little bit. A young man getting high fives all around. Nice grab. Santana in his last start threw 109 pitches in seven innings against the Tigers. Three starts ago, 119 pitches thrown. In Houston. Oh, and two. Got him. Good pitch. Strikeout number seven. This slider right here, perfect spot. Looks like a fastball. And then a little bit of movement down and away. Fox tracks with those nine sections presented by Carrier. <laughs> I like that the best. Nine sections. Nine sections. A 
That's hit to center and Hicks makes the catch. Seven really good innings again tonight for Irvin Santana. And a 3 1 Twins lead. North is presented by Toyota. See where Toyota takes you. Test drive one at your Toyota dealer. Toyota, let's go places. By Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine for the everyday competitor in all of us. And by McDonald's, the classic quarter pounder with cheese only at McDonald's and right now, just three bucks. Aaron Hicks will lead off for the Twins here in the bottom of the seventh as they are up by two. I had a conversation with Aaron earlier about the pressure that this part of the season brings. He said for the first time a lot of us young guys are going through this and he said it's exciting. It's fun coming to the ballpark. You want to make an impact. He certainly did a couple days ago with two hits, two RBIs and a pair of walks. And he said I've been relying a lot on the veterans, guys like Torrey Hunter, talking to them every single day about what I need to do to get my mind in the right place, guys, to not fold under the pressure, to go out there and do my job and do it at a high level. And so far as the leadoff hitter and out in the field, Aaron Hicks is doing just that. A lot of young ball players right now being relied upon to carry this team through. And it's fun to see some of the veterans in that clubhouse, the guys like Trevor Plouffe and Brian Dozier, and especially Torrey Hunter helped them kind of find their way through their first experience playoff push late in the season. Yeah, I mean, you can't put anything on this. Uh, you know, you can't explain what this means to a lot of these young guys like Aaron Hicks and Rosario and Sano and even Brian Dozier. I mean, Dozier has gone through the last four years of watching the Twins lose over 90 ball games a season. So it's great. It's great to see where the Twins are at. Hicks drives it to the left field corner. And Hicks has his second extra base hit. It's a leadoff double here in the seventh against Jeff Manship, the former twin. Yeah, Manship has been doing a great job out of that bullpen and 28 relief appearances covering 34 innings. It allowed only 18 hits, the sinker down and away, and good piece of hitting by Hicks taking it the other way. We saw it in his triple. He took that fastball from Salazar to left center. This one he hits right down that left field line. And now Dozier. Corner infielders playing in here. They're anticipating a bunt. Very important at bat right here for Brian Dozier to advance Aaron Hicks. There are the numbers right there by Manship. 28 strikeouts in 34 innings. And Dozier waits on a breaking ball, gets a piece of it, and fouls it back. Put the pressure on the other team. Dozier's job right here, get kicks over the third. No sacrifice bunts for Dozier. We've seen him try to bunt for some hits. One strike. There's a bunt, and it's foul, 0 2. 
Now, Jeff Manship, 30 years old now. He signed by the Twins back in 2006 out of Notre Dame. He was a 14th round pick for the Twins. Four different seasons with the Twins. Appeared at 41 ball games. Did make six starts. Three wins, two losses, then went to the Rockies and the Phillies. And now in his first season with the Indians. Called up by the Indians in the middle of June. See what Dozier can get done now on 0 and 2, trying to get Hicks at least a third. And he takes a ball. And Manship's always wow. had a good curveball, and that curveball didn't miss for some much. reason. Was called a ball. Take a look at this curveball right here. A little bit high, I guess. One and two. It's a critical call in the Escobar at bat in the third inning that sent the stage for a three-run inning, and now a base hit to left, and Dozier advances Hicks with a single. Aaron Hicks had to hold up, make sure that ball got through the infield, and he bats to third. So Brian Dozier gets it, gets his job done by getting Hicks over to third. And now Maurer at the plate. If Dozier had succeeded in bunting Hicks to third and making it out of the process, it would have been interesting to see how the Indians. Play it ordinarily, you'd say, "Well, you put uh, Maurer aboard and play for the double play." But with Sano and his power, I don't know that that necessarily would have been the play that the Indians made. Here's Maurer with runners at first and third. Indians playing the middle infield at double play depth. Maurer takes up high, ball one. One and zero to Maurer, cracked an RBI double in the third inning, walked in the fifth, and now two and zero. He's a strike. Fastball at 93. Manship signing a minor league contract with the Indians over the winter, then made the club in June. Two and one. And foul back. Was used as a starter, principally a reliever, but boy, has he been a godsend for Terry Francona with the numbers he's put up. Now trying to pitch out of a jam here in the seventh. Inside, three and two. With Sano on deck. The base is open, but it's second base. Yeah, I remember Manship. This doesn't mean a fastball right here either. He has a lot of confidence in that breaking ball. Only eight walks in 34 innings. Mauer caught him during his Twins career, so Joe should have a pretty good idea about what he likes to throw. He's shaking off a couple signs. Whoa, another close pitch, and it's taken for a walk. And Sano will come up with the bases loaded. Ray tried to sneak that fastball by him, but Tom Allian said it was low. Hmm. Now Mickey Callaway to the mound here with Sano, ready to come up with the bases loaded and nobody out. There 
there are many established pitching coaches in the game held in higher regard than Mickey Callaway and his ability to get the most out of young pitchers. Ubaldo Jimenez came uh, to Cleveland and they found something that made that work. Well, you can see that uh, visit was not only the manship but also to his infielders and a little conversation with Tom Elliott. And Manship, of course, was told hey, if the ball's hit back to you, you go home to Gomes for the force out at home. We'll see how the infield plays. We're going to play not all the way on the grass. Paul Molitor, halfway. Paul Molitor related the experience he had as a left side infielder when Dave Winfield was at the plate and having to play the infield in with a big, strong. Hitter at the plate. Swing and a miss. So no swung at three and missed all three in the fifth. Yeah, he's guessing fastball right there. He got a breaking ball down and away. Strike one to Sano. 0 for two with a walk. Takes another breaking ball for a ball. The Twins have three grand slams on the year. True by Trevor Plouffe, one by Eddie Rosario. Another breaking ball on a swing and a miss, one and two. You throw him a fastball for a strike here. No. I said if you do, and then I left it open ended. Yeah. I think viewers at home could finish it themselves. It's a breaking ball, a swing and a miss, one away. And that's Manship strikeout pitch, that curveball. It's got good tight rotation on it. Said the first pitch. Watch the noise. Reacting to a fastball, the pitch down and away, a slider. And then he goes to the curveball, another curveball, and then another one. So Manship picking up a big strikeout. And now Ploof, a more veteran hitter, but Ploof has hit into a league high 27 double plays. We'll see what the veteran can do against the veteran reliever Manship. Ball one. Their breaking ball. One and oh to Plouffe. Chop foul one and one. He got a fastball in off the plate. Guy at the plate, Twins RBI leader. Foul back, and he got one to hit. And you can see Manship was more upset about that pitch than Plouffe was, the guy who missed it. And he got away with a hanger right there. Manship going to take a little stroll behind the mound. Take a moment here and wish uh, Chris Atterbury, of course, best of luck for however long he's in for Corey Provis, who is home listening, watching, missing tonight's game because he lost his voice. Yeah, good. Hope he finds it. Corey, get well soon. One and two to Trevor Plouffe. And now two and two. I lost my car keys once. It has found nothing him. To do with no, that. no. I, I found him. Trying to find a connection there. There was none. Big spot for the Twins, trying to expand a two-run lead. Scalded, but foul. Ball playing pinball, hopefully among the railing down there. Still two and two.
Be careful down there. Yeah. And another 2 2 coming to blue. Paul, third strike, two down. And that'll leave it to Eddie Rosario. Well, Trevor making look, maybe looking breaking ball, and Manship struck that, snuck that fastball by him. So two big strikeouts for Jeff Manship. Right there. Good spot for it. Rosario has the other Twins Grand Slam. Bluff has two of them. Rosario has one. The Twins will take a three hopper up the middle if it can skip into center field. A double and a single started the inning, then the walk to Maurer. Bases are still loaded with two out. Ball one. Strike one and one. Rosario with a liner to right and a couple of fly balls to left. And Chip was in a heap of trouble. He's one good pitch from pitching his way out of it. Old foul and it's one and two. Series, there were so many opportunities similar to this one here in the seventh. Twins weren't able to get that hit to win either game of the doubleheader on Saturday. A great chance built here in the seventh, but now it's one and two to Rosario with two out. Popped up, and Manship looks like he's wriggled his way out of the jam. The Twins fill the bases with nobody out and then Manship hits Sano, Blue, and Rosario. Of America's Studio Sports Update. On this date in 1968, the twin Cesar Tovar became just the second player in Major League history to play all nine positions in one game. He's the only position player to start a game at pitcher in Twins history, and he threw a scoreless first inning and struck out future Hall of Famer Reggie Jackson. Yeah, a teammate of mine back in the early 70s, Happy, we called him Cesar Tovar. Prior to that, Campy Campanaris was the only guy who had done it. I remember we did a game in Detroit years ago. Shane Halter did it for the Tigers, and I think somebody's done it since. First pitch, grounded up the middle. Chris Johnson with a base hit. The Twins, who've 
who took the three nothing lead back in the third but really since the outstanding play by Lindor ended that inning this game is built momentum for the Indians including the bottom of the seventh inning well I thought maybe Santana would go seven because his pitch count was 90 after six but he had a quick one two three seventh inning so he's out there for the eighth and Chris Johnson now being pinch run for by Mike Avilas. He jumped on that first pitch after striking out the first two at bats. Ramirez takes strike one. Meanwhile, in Houston, it's still the Angels 3 2 over the Astros, and the Angels will try to hold on to that lead without Joe Smith, who was on crutches when he left Minneapolis. He had a hotel accident, sprained an ankle. I don't know when they'll get him back. Down and in, one and one. Ramirez with a bouncer to short, and then he drove in a run with an infield hit. He is five for seven in his matchups against Irvin Santana. Well, again, uh, 11 ground ball outs for Santana. I'd like to get maybe a double play right here. He's had eight double plays turned behind him. Ramirez pretty quick out of that batter's box. Though. Hold foul. One and two. We expected a low scoring game. We've gotten it. The team's got the first three runs, but haven't been able to put up a run since. Now a leadoff single in the eighth. And the Indians are threatening. And Abiel is not really a guy that's a threat to steal. He has three stolen bases in four attempts. Two and two. His job is try to get from first to third on a base hit. Crack to third, pass Ploof and down the line. Avilas to second, he'll hold up there. And Ramirez continues to punish Irvin Santana. The tying runs at first with nobody out. Well, ball down and away, and credit Martina Ramirez because he just reached out and just hit it just past the diving Ploof at third base. Santana will complete three trips through the Cleveland batting order, but he'll leave a bit of a mess with runners at first and second and nobody out. Santana entered the inning having retired seven men in a row. Yeah, it's the first time Santana has been taken out during an inning. This is in, in five starts. With the lead, he comes off the field with two men aboard and nobody out. Now, the 
the wait's finally over. Two legendary heavyweights meet for the first time. Josh Barnett takes on Roy Nelson in a long awaited matchup. Plus, it's the biggest challenge yet for Uriah Hall. He takes on Gengar Musasi. UFC Fight Night Saturday at 9 p.m. Central, only on Fox Sports 1. Glenn Perkins in to try to get some big outs in the eighth inning. Yeah, Perk making his 55th relief appearance. He worked here on Sunday. Did give up a solo home run in the ninth inning in the eight to one win. Squaring the bunt, Kipnis drops it down. And Perkins fires to first. It just barely got Kipnis with a sacrifice, advancing two runners now into scoring position. Yeah, Kipnis with his fourth sacrifice of the year, advancing the runners. We'll bring up Lindor and then significantly it's not Michael Brantley hitting behind Lindor but Martinez because of the Brantley injury. Lindor's never faced Perkins. And Lindor is a right handed hitter hitting 336. Corner infielders up middle infielders back. And Lindor pops it up a foul ball that will reach the seats. Door strikes out about once every six times up. And he takes strike two. Perkins relied primarily on a fastball in his last outing. He did throw a slider and it got hammered over the fence. 0 oh 2 to Francisco Lindor. Popped up right field. Hunter with the catch and the throw to the plate. And Avilas, the pinch runner, unable to score. Two down. That'll bring up Martinez. What a little lesson right there by Torrey Hunter on how you get behind the ball to make a good throw toward home plate. Uh, Avilas, not the quickest of foot, but Torrey did a good job getting behind that ball just to make a good throw. See him set himself up, get it. And then get rid of it as quick as possible. And now Martinez with a big hack at the first pitch fastball, fouling it to the backstop. Brantley's injury really impacted this inning a lot here. Brantley not only won't hit here, but if Martinez was still available, he have may have been the pinch runner for Johnson after his leadoff single. Dozier backhands and throws the first. Perkins gets the three outs. Santana and the Twins still lead by two.
Bottom of the eighth. Stay with us directly after the game for Twins Live. Presented by CenturyLink, we'll take a look at a great start by Irvin Santana. Pitches into the eighth inning, then get some help from Glenn Perkins to get out of the jam that he created. We'll also take a look at a big game for Brian Dozier, both at the plate and that big uprising in the third inning, and also flashing the leather as per usual out second base. We'll also bring you inside the clubhouse here from Paul Mauder. His thoughts on this start by Irvin Santana and set up the rest of this series. The Twins in a critical spot, guys, leading here while Houston is down a run at home to the Los Angeles Angels. And the Angels threatening in the eighth inning. Thank you, Kevin. Dozier's had a very busy day at second base, and he's had some atypical plays to make. You know, not the routine two, three hoppers. No, Martinez hit that ball sharply right there, and Dozier shading him a little bit up the middle. They, the, the defense was placed perfectly for Martinez. They made a nice play. Here's Zach McAllister coming out of the bullpen, the hard throwing righty. Mentioned his name earlier in the ball game when. Salazar was called up in early April. He took McAllister's spot in the rotation. Want to know to Hunter. And a pop up near the Twins dugout and out of play. Hunter Suzuki and Escobar trying to get an additional run on the board. Twins haven't scored since Mauer's double in the third inning. They're doing. With McAllister, what the Twins have done with Trevor May. Basically, a hard thrower. He has two very good pitches. Good fastball, hard breaking ball. There's the hard breaking ball right there. Tory doesn't <laughs> like the call. Tory questioning Tom Hallian and his generosity. One and two. Five hits and 19 at bats against McAllister. Tory kind of looking up at the stands, yeah. making sure everybody's all right. Yeah, fan got hit, and the thumbs up given that yeah. he or she is okay, but fans, players are so concerned about that. Tap to the left side, two hops, easy play for Ramirez. One down. Bring up Suzuki. You can follow live Twins baseball every day with MLB.com at bat on your smartphone or tablet. Stay connected to the Twins all season with MLB.tv game of the day, in game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, and more. You can browse the app's new features, including stat cast tracking videos and bilingual access for Spanish speaking fans. Download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. Suzuki with a single his last time up. He was hit by a pitch. He took a foul ball against the mask. Business as usual for Kurt Suzuki. And a strike called 0 2. It's been a while, so maybe this warning is uh, uh, worth reminding our viewers who aren't used to games like this in September. If this is tense for you, if you're anxious about the end of this game, get used to it. It's only going to get worse. It's fun. It should be fun. Off the plate, two and two. I always looked at pressure as nothing more than you put on yourself. Do you know what, though? I honestly believe it's games like this and playoff games and World Series games are almost easier for you guys who are playing on it mm -hmm. in the game than it is for the fans who are watching. I agree. I agree. Side, three and two. I mean, if you're out there, you can at least affect the outcome and, you know, win or lose. You do your best. And But fans are sitting there. Turning 
themselves inside out. Biting their, fing biting their fingernails. Three and two to Suzuki. Oh, back. Oh, almost. Needed Dan Gladden's glove. All right, now that ball here right between us and their booth, which is Rick Manning. Right, another there. good outfield. I, I'm going with Rick Manning. Okay. He would have caught that. Well. <laughs> well, people are yelling at you. Come on, Dick. I don't. I jeez. Ball hit to right center field. And it's hanging up for El Monte. He makes the catch in the gap. Two down. This copyrighted telecast presented by the authority of the Minnesota Twins and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And you should have caught that ball, Dick. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Minnesota Twins LLC. What could I have done differently to catch that ball? Die. Jump out of the booth? That ball is a little bit to your yeah. left. Here is Escobar. And down and in a ball. You know what I like about and before I think you know Kevin Jepson's coming in. But how many times has Glenn Perkins we've talked to him about being a closer and he said you know prior to becoming a closer sometimes the game is won and lost in the seventh or eighth inning. And Perkins did a great job of getting out of that eighth inning. Well, I tell you what that's uh, there was at least as much pressure on Perkins in the eighth inning as there will be on Jepson in the ninth. Exactly. 2 0 oh to Escobar. Angels a batter to run, still batting top of the eighth. It's 4 to 2, Los Angeles. Well, it was a walk to Escobar in the second inning that really set the stage for the Twins to take the 3 0 lead. And that came with two outs. And there's two outs here. Now Escobar has a count in his favor 3 0. -oh. And now 3 and 1. If you're Danny San Salazar, you look back and you go, oh, that walk. That's what hurt. Me. You forget about the triple and the couple doubles, but it's that walk with two outs. You can say that because I've been there. And you'd know better than I, and it could be just a coincidence. But here's a guy who was locked in, eight up, eight down, and as soon as the guy gets on base, he has to go to the stretch position, and you see it an awful lot. And it might be just a coincidence, but. And the Twins hit three bullets in a row against the Salazar right after the walk. And he fell behind Aaron Hicks 3 1, threw him a fastball. Good hitting by Hicks with the uh, RBI triple. Scored it, Escobar. 3 and 2. And Escobar drives one to right field. Chisholm Hall going back, hoping for a bounce. And it'll be another double for Eduardo Escobar. Number 30 on the year for Escobar. 35 last year and 20 of his doubles have come since the All-Star break. Well, fastball got the count in his favor, 3-2. McAllister challenging him with a fastball, left middle in, and Escobar hitting it off the wall. And he trots into second base with a two-out double. When you hear field staff for the Twins. General Manager Terry Ryan would say it that Aaron Hicks is starting to figure things out. Think about his two hits here today. They've both been for extra bases. Both hit to the opposite field. This is from the left side of the plate where he was uh, very poor last year to the point where he gave up hitting from the left side. He had a triple to the left center field gap in the third driving in the first run and then a double to the left field corner in the seventh. Way out in front, and it's 0 2. Breaking ball right there by McAllister. McAllister, 27 years old, in his fifth season with the Indians. First came up in 2011. Big guy, 6'6, six six, about 240. Originally signed by the Yankees. 0 and 2. Just missed the corner with a mid 90s fastball. Foul 
the way. Nicks has cut down his strikeouts quite a bit. Now one strikeout for every six at bats. Far cry from his first two years. This yes, I was just going to say, you know how far he has come after his first two mm -hmm. years. One and two again to Hicks. The left center field, El Monte over and oh. leaping at the end. Hicks nearly burned him with another opposite field extra base hit. We'll go to the ninth. Kevin Jensen will try to save a two-run lead for the Twins. have done just enough hitting to take a 3-1 lead to the ninth and Kevin Jepson will try to save it. Yeah Jepson making his 25th relief appearance looking for his first save since he saved a ball game in Kansas City back on September 9th in the Twins 12 inning 3-2 win. Seven saves for the Twins 12 saves overall. He had five saves with the Rays earlier this year. Veteran Santana, Chisenhall, and Gomes await here in the ninth. Santana 0 for 3 on the ninth. Very high ball one. Santana 2 for 4 against Kevin Jepson. Chisenhall's never faced him. Jepson's done a good job of making the opponent swing the bat. Only seven walks in 23 innings. And Santana fouls it off his front leg. That sounded and looked like it hurt. A 2 0 pitch in Santana with a mighty swing and a foul. We can see where he wears that pad right there to protect things like this to happen. And even though he has that pad, that's still got to hurt. Wow. Ball's coming in about 95, and then you hit it into that shin area. Probably faster than the ball came toward home plate. Now he 
saw it in New York a month or so ago. Mark Teixeira fouled one up off his front leg higher, ended up suffering a hairline fracture, and he's done for the year. Santana still not ready to resume his at bat. Two and one from Jepson. That's what I wanted to hear. The fan made a catch on a carrot and a foul ball. It's just a little applause. Mm -hmm. You know, for the effort anyway. Thank you. Thank You're you. <laughs> two and two. And a foul fly over the tarp. Still two and two. Angels got one in the top of the eighth. They lead the Astros for, uh, excuse me. Yes, they lead the Astros 4 2, bottom of the eighth coming up in Houston. Santana, very good eye at the play, too. 99 walks so far this year. He has struck out 110 times. 2 and 2 to the leadoff man here in the ninth. On the ground. As tonight's plays have gone, that's a routine one for Dozier. One way, one away. Time now for what's next, brought to you by CenturyLink. Tomorrow, Corey Kluber will be on a bit of a pitch count, just his second start since uh, not being able to pitch because of a hamstring injury. And Phil Hughes will be uh, re entering the starting rotation. Uh, big outing for Phil Hughes. They twins need him to go deep into the ball game. And when I say deep, I'm talking maybe five, six innings. Yep. Gonna have a better outing than he had in his last start where he went only three. Swing and a miss by Chisenhall. Lose with the brief time in the bullpen. Now back in the rotation. As the Twins piece the end of this season together in terms of starting pitching, series by series. Oh, it's off the plate, one on one. Jepson has four pitches. We've seen a good fastball at 95, 96. That last pitch is a curveball. We'll throw a little cut fastball and then the changeup. Foul back, one and two. Fastball right there at 95, up the ladder a little bit. Chisenhall could only foul it off. Chisenhall's never faced Jepson. Jetson, 31 years old, traded over to the Twins from the Tampa Bay Rays back in late July. Breaking ball, and he was able to check. Got the count two and two to Santana and challenged him with fastballs. Two and two. Foul tip. Suzuki hangs on. Two down. And they blew that fastball by Chisholm Hall. Straight over the top fastball. Chisholm Hall got a piece of it, but the ball right went right into the glove of Kurt Suzuki. Just a foul tip. Caught for strike three. Now Gomes, who has three singles and six at bats against Jepson. Switch hitter Almonte on deck. And Gomes, a very good fastball hitter. To center. Hicks going back, still going back. It's Buxton out there, and he smothers it against the fence. Buxton in center. Hicks was in right and Buxton even with his speed he couldn't track it down 
And the Indians are still alive. Well, again, I say Gomes, very good fastball hitter. He jumped on that first pitch and drove it about 400 feet away, straight away center. Buxton on his wheel, but he can't catch up with that. It does hit off the wall off of him. The ball drops straight down. It's a two out double for Gomes, his second double of the ballgame. And now Almonte. 0 for 2 with a walk. Off the plate, ball one. And a change up right there. So Vilas in the on deck circle. But if Jepson gets El Monte, he'll leave him there. Speed pitch over for a strike. Two, two straight changeups. Now the fastball at 95, and it's one and two. A little over 21,000 the paint attendance tonight. Suzuki with a block. Been a ton of men on base, but I bet you that's the fourth or fifth block by Suzuki. Wow. With men on base. I'll tell you what, we've seen great job by Suzuki behind the plate. We've seen great defense in the out or in the infield, especially by Dozier and Maurer. Two and two. Got him. Well, a big win for the Twins as now they have 12 games left. And every win so important. Well, 